Pat Cahill is the national sales manager of American Color Imaging. It's a sought after platform speaker. Pat's lectured throughout the United States and he talks about the benefits of volume business models, team building, sales, customer service, communications, and accountability. Pat, along with his wife, Mary, founded Cahill Studios of Photography in Amory, I hope I'm saying that right, Amory, Wisconsin, in, back in 1978. You don't look that old. In August 2014, Joy Cahill, Pat's daughter, purchased a studio from Pat and Mary. Pat's a past board member of the Professional Photographer of America Industry, it says Adversary Council. Is that, is that right, Pat? Adversary Council? Yeah, Advisory Council. Advisory. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, past board member of the Wisconsin Professional Photographers Association, honorary fellow of the state of Wisconsin, member of numerous trade organizations, recipient of numerous awards. He and his wife, Mary, have five children, and Pat is a former investigator for the Polk County, Wisconsin Sheriff's Department. So please welcome our speaker for this evening, Pat Cahill. Pat? Well, I appreciate you all. I appreciate being here. Um, and hopefully you can all see the screen now, and I'm going to run through this. Uh, again, my name is Pat Cahill. I'm the National Sales Manager for ACI. Um, that's, that's my day job. But everyone's like, well, again, someone that's going to just come up and lecture that, that, that's a sales guy. Well, not exactly. So I've always wore a couple different hats in my life, and my wife and I started a studio in Emory, Wisconsin, in that studio, um, compared to where you're at, Emory, Wisconsin, give you a little demographics. Uh, the average income in Emory, Wisconsin, household income, uh, average earnings is $35,000 per household per year, 43,000 male, 31,000 female. And um, high school graduations, you can see the percentage and, and discounts that are here. Where Emory's located compared to where you're at in Tampa, is just a mere 1,569 miles north as the crow flies. So uh, just south of, <laughs> some people told me today, they go, you're just south of the Canadian border. Well, a few hours, but yes. So we have a, a great time. I would encourage everyone that's on the call, anytime anyone wants to ask anything, uh, just speak up and um, it should go live here. And just to make sure I test that theory, Chuck, can you just say hi for a second again? Yes, sir. All right, there it is, and it flipped over, so that's good. So I appreciate that. So that's a little bit about where we're from, and let me tell you a little bit about our past, and, and Chuck had, had talked about it before. But, um, you know, in my wife and I started out in 1970, uh, we were married in 1978, so that was a bit, a bit ago, and we started, we knew that we needed to have more income. She was a full-time uh, registered nurse and she was a charge nurse in an OB department at a local hospital. And I was an investigator with the sheriff's office, as Chuck said earlier. There was a unique thing back in 1978, uh, we continued those two careers and we had, we have five children. And in 1986, Mary said, you know what? We seem to have more time than we have money, even though we had two careers. And while this may shock everyone, as a charge nurse in a hospital at the time, Mary was actually um, earning $11 an hour. $11 an hour doesn't sound like uh, a lot of money anymore. I was an investigator with the sheriff's department, and to, to put ourselves in harm way, I got, I got to do that for $9.20 an hour. So as you can see with a family of five, that actually, it wasn't conducive to raising a family of five and giving us the lifestyle we wanted. It was a career I loved, I enjoyed doing, but in 1986, Mary retired from nursing. In 1987, I retired from uh, my position at the sheriff's office, and we pursued this thing called photography. Uh, I had grown up in a studio. It was a part-time business that my parents had had, and I'd been doing weddings since I was 13 years old. But the unique thing was is we found ourselves in a position where we had more time than we had money, and we were doing anything we could do as entrepreneurs to to, to rectify that. And we started our studios. We thought at the time, we ended up uh, within a couple of years, by 1989, we had two storefronts, one in Amory, one in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. We had 27 employees. I was doing about 600 seniors a year. And uh, 
in probably about, uh, I think it was close to 45, 50 weddings a year, uh, double weddings every weekend. So by many people's standard, we were living the PPA dream and we were living the dream of, of all the people that we should have had storefronts, people that were working. But there was a small problem. Mary and I were broke. Then in 1989, a unique thing happened. There was a knock at the back door of the, of the studio on Christmas, the night before Christmas Eve day. And we were still at the studio at 11 o'clock at night. We were spraying prints and we were doing anything we could do. Back then, everyone sprayed their prints, right? Everyone did what they could do to save money and, and be more efficient. And there was a knock at the back door and we opened the door up and it was our accountant and, uh, you know, Roger. And I remember Roger looking at me and I said, Roger, what are you doing here? You know, it's 11 o'clock at night. And uh, he said, you know, the community loves you and the small community you're in. The, the associations you're in uh, love you. The banks love you. The insurance companies like you. The lab thinks you're great. I think we were running almost a $15,000 a month uh, overhead then with those two places. Their lab bill was running somewhere in excess of 10 grand a month right then with the, all the stuff we're doing and church directories and everything. But Roger said, I know how broke you and Mary are. You don't have enough money to uh, even have a great Christmas dinner. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing you guys over food baskets from our church. We went to the same church so that you could uh, have a, a great meal for Christmas. And if that isn't a come to Jesus wake up moment for anyone to have your accountant come and do that for you, I don't know if anyone else has ever been in a position to have someone bring you food baskets. But while we had this great outward appearance to everyone, we were starving and, and we were hurting for money on the inside. So at that moment, we decided to change our business model. So when we were out of money and we were out of time, we had to do a couple different things. We could either change our business model to match the demographics that I just shared with you where we live, or we could stick to the same business model we had, but we would have to move to an area that had a higher income that could support the business model we had and we could have the income we wanted. So we elected to refocus our business. We sold those two storefronts. We went after, we made a determination that volume, uh, doing sports and underclass, strictly volume, was where we were making in our most money and was most profitable. In doing that, um, we went from having food baskets brought to us in 1989 to a six-figure income by 1991, and that's where we stayed for the rest of our career. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is the right business model for everybody. Uh, there's, there's different business models, and whatever it fits in for you, it fits in for you. So that's a little bit about our story. Now let's move forward. So as I travel the country now, as I speak across the country, everyone's asking, how do I, how do I get better control of my time? How do I make more money? Well, <laughs> the COVID-19 has got us some control of our time right now, right? We're all locked down. But we're in a great position where we're at. Uh, our studio was sold to my daughter, Joy. He's doing a phenomenal job and is growing the business, uh, currently doing about 60,000 kids a year. And uh, it's an awesome business. And and she's doing a great job of growing it. So I'm, we're really proud of her on that. But we looked at what do we have to do to automate our, our workflow? What do we have to do to automate uh, what we're doing? And we can regain control of our time and money by creating automated processes, utilizing uh, softwares like the Flow software from Image, uh, from Image Quicks, uh, Image, <laughs> Image Quicks and Photolinks uh, combination now, using the Flow software and using a piece of software also called Order School Picks. Uh, that's a proprietary software. It created repeatable, duplicatable, and scalable processes that have allowed us to use automation, not human beings, but use automation to create products that are high consumer demand. And that's what we've done. So here's an example. In a small town where we live, when we pull up, if you guys have ever been in a small town and you go to the graduation parties, here's what you see. You see a display of images that we'd captured for underclass and sports from the time this girl was in kindergarten throughout her uh, senior pictures and all of her sports and everything else. So we found that it was really hard to make the sales that we needed to make with senior portraits to successfully uh, meet the income goals that we had. But we found that we could, uh, let me move something out of the way if I can, I can't. So um, let me just try it right here. Now I can see my screen, sorry about that. Uh, 
but we decided that if, if we would, <clears throat> we could live with the classes and deal with the masses or we could live with the masses and deal with the classes. We found that, that school pictures, sports pictures, a lot of those things were a, a product that was really, um, uh, what do I want to say? It was recession proof for many years. Now, it wasn't COVID-19 proof, I'll say that, because what have we found with that? Uh, they shut the schools down and they shut sports down and they've shut everything down and locked it down. That was a business plan that no one could have, could have predicted. But here we're looking at a lot of these are, are $30, $40 sales that we're making and we're making them multiple times a year. So, and we're looking at this as a case of Madison and from making posters for it and making everything else, we've done it. But what people want to do now is they want personal content and they want to, they want to not only have personal content, but they want to have um, professional content. Professional content is what we as professional photographers provide. Personal content, and when I refer to that, is, is what they actually capture with their own phones and their own devices. Many people want to share stories and they want to tell their stories really important to them. When I was growing up, my folks would sit around the coffee table. They'd have coffee with everybody um, that came over. They always had a box of pictures. It was family pictures sitting on, on their table. And they would literally share those images with everyone that came over. It was proud. It was able, they were able to tell their story. Just like today, many people have cell phones and mobile phones. They capture images and they want to use social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, whatever they're using to share that content. But there's one unique thing they want with that content. The content has to be able to allow them to tell a story. So when you look here, here's a picture of my grandson and it says, uh, do your pictures tell a story? Well, I didn't just post a picture of, of my grandson and myself at the Dairy Queen. What do we post? Um, and then I put on the bottom hashtag Dairy Queen with grandpa. So it, it's telling a story as I'm doing it. Here's another picture. You know, we live in the rural area. We live on a, on a farm and, and uh, we have in the country. So when we're working with a skid loader and yes, the skid loader was shut off when this picture was taken, the door was open. He was sitting with me. No child was harmed. I don't need any calls from OSHA and I'm not being safe. But uh, here's a picture, but it's John Deere, Lincoln's helping grandpa. You know, big kid toys are fun. So it's part of telling the story. And what we found in our own businesses, and we found that pe many people have want the professional content, but they want to be able to have it personalized. And personalization means money. Products that are personalized, um, a, a lot of people through that personalization are more willing to purchase from the professional photographers. So what we've done is uh, using a tool like the, the Float, software from uh, ImageQuick's PhotoLinks and using the basic layout tool that's in Flow. And I have to look here to see if I have anyone still on. You guys all still hearing me? All right? All right, good. That's a, that's a shake of a head yes, so I'll go back to here. So I'm uh, using the layout, the basic layout tool, we were able to create repeatable, duplicatable, and automated processes that allows us to take the image it's just a great image. It was a picture of hockey kids on ice and we were able to enhance it with graphics, professionally enhance it with graphics and personalize it. We've added the studio name. We've added the um, hockey association's name because many people have pride not only in the decisions they make to be part of the Baldwin hockey in this case. Um, they want the picture to tell the story. So you know that it's 16, 17 uh, with this one I have up there right now. It was taken by the studio. You can see the logo down in the, the bottom right corner. And it's been graphically enhanced with the Baldwin colors and their logo. So what we've done is we've created an image. We've enhanced that image to help it tell a story. And we found that many people wanted that. Here's another uh, girls volleyball team. But again, they have pride that they are the Clayton Bears. They have pride that um, this is a, a volleyball team. This is the year on it. I don't know how many of you all have a drawer full of pictures that, that you literally have to open up of your own children. And then you look at it and go, what the heck year was that taken? And then you go through the guessing game. Was this, was this, uh, were they in fifth grade? Were they in sixth grade? What grade were they in? And so by putting a date on there, it enhances the image and tells a story. Now, here's one thing I'm going to say. 
you can't take crappy images and put graphics on them and turn them into a saleable product. It all starts with capturing a quality product to begin with as professional photographers. And that's what we want to start with. Here's a case of that same hockey team. The individual, this was shot on green screen, and you see that it, it has been enhanced and put into a memory mate, not just a paper memory mate, but the sport mate or memory mate here, this is an eight by 10, it tells a story. It's got their name on it, it's got the year on it, it's got the association. And we could build each one of these in Photoshop one at a time, that'd be really easy. Or we could find a way to automate it so that all we have to do is take the images, take the data with the team and individual name, have through um, automation, be able to create additional products. Same with the volleyball team here. Now the background in this case is in green screen with the girl, that's the runoff mat and we're using that in the background. But we're able to take those products and we're able to enhance them and put it together. Even simple things like refrigerator magnets are big sales. And while this sounds like, yeah, really, I, I don't know if I want to do this kind of thing. I don't know if you want to do it either. It's, it's, I'm not professing that this is a business model for anyone else. What I have seen is many of my friends that have had storefront studios and studios throughout the years have now found that there's actually less, the senior numbers have been declining and the numbers of sessions are declining. Their rent hasn't declined. Their overhead hasn't declined. Their insurance payments haven't come declined. So they've been looking for ways they could diversify their incomes. And some of them, not everyone, but some of them have selected to uh, adapting some more business, uh, some more volume business models to do that. We actually polled our, our consumers and we said, what would you rather have? An image like this for your refrigerator or an image like this? Because the refrigerator in a lot of cases, that's the new way that a lot of people display their images in a lot of homes. How many people that are watching right now that are on part of the Zoom call, just sort of raise a hand, actually have, um, you know, some type of refrigerator image on their refrigerator, showing grandkids, kids, and whatever. Um, again, I had, I, I had a person once when I was doing this actually confront me and say, well, you know, we don't believe if you're not selling an eight by 10 for, you know, uh, over a hundred dollars, you can't make a living in this. How much do you sell an eight by 10 for? And I said, well, it's a different business model. I didn't want to address it. And they said, no, seriously, what do you sell an eight by 10 for? And I said, well, it, you have a different business model than I have. It's not, one's not right, one's not wrong. There's different. And, uh, and, the, and he persisted in, in front of everyone. And I said, well, we sell them for $5. And he about fell off his chair and he said, seriously, you sell it eight by 10 for $5. This is, this is a joke, right? I go, no, it's, it's true. And he said, well, how do you make a living selling eight by 10s for $5? I said, well, we pay a dollar 18 for them. We sell them for $5. He goes, yeah, you call that profit. And we sold a half a million of them last year. So, um, and he looked at me and smiled and, and I could see the look in his face and I went, and he's counting. I went, yeah, it's a big number. And I just went on and I never had anyone ask me that question again. Many of the, Mary and I even tried to join organizations that wouldn't let us join their organization because you know what? We did that volume work, that crap work that no one should do. Typically, once they got to go and spend a weekend on our boat with us and they found out that I didn't have um, a golden spoon when I was born. So um, they spent the weekend on the boat with us and and we actually paid for that by, by doing the volume work. And so that, that's how we did a little bit. And so we're, we said, what do the consumers want? They want to be able to tell a story, whether that's with a button adding graphics, you know, as you can see different buttons here, whether that's uh, adding just graphically enhanced wallets. Now, would you do this for a senior portrait or a fine portrait of a family? Absolutely not. Why would you do this? This is a different product line. And, you know, there's, there's guys like Ben Shirk and many guys out there that are absolutely incredibly phenomenal photographers. They can take and they can build uh, composites, they can build graphics, they can put things together that absolutely stunning and blow me away. And some of them may even have a, a couple days into, into creating the graphics on that image. That's great. And, and, and I don't wanna take away from that, but we have to create repeatable, duplicatable and scalable processes that can be done to 60,000 kids in the push of a button. And that's what I'm showing you here, utilizing the tools like Flow, utilizing those tools with a push of a button, we're able to create 
trader cards, front and back. We're able to customize, personalize, create things. We also found that if they were willing to pay us online, we were talking before about how do we get them all to pay us? Do you collect envelopes? Not always. A lot of times, we've our goal is part of automation. We found out without the automation, an eight by 10 was costing us about, um, not from the lab, but with all the things we put into it, about $5 a unit to produce it. Well, through automation, we've been able to take in my daughter's uh, really, really been able to, to exemplify this, that we've been able to take that automation and reduce the cost of goods sold uh, down considerably to below $2 a unit. Now, the, now, there's still lots of other overhead that goes in there, but I'm talking about raw material. So what we found is our goal was to get everyone to go online and order. What do people want? They want digi digital shareable content. So we set up ways that they could go online through order school picks or uh, with the image quick uh, software, either one, where they could go online and they, they could purchase and prepay just like a prepay envelope. Once they did that, then we rewarded that behavior by them going online by giving them a free digital file like this. When we first started doing that, everyone said, seriously, you're giving them a free digital file? How are you selling any pictures? Well, the bottom line is we were giving them something, an image that told a story for social media, and they only received that if they purchased a package and purchased things online uh, prepay. We actually found once we started doing this, that our sales went up, not down, and the size of our packages increased because we were meeting the needs of the consumer. Uh, again, it's what they buy. And, and then ACI, American Color Imaging, has created a way now that when we send these school pictures, we send this data into the lab to be printed, what happens is it automatically automatically gets um, delivered to the email that was associated when they purchased online by the lab so the studio doesn't even have to do it anymore. So that's been a, a great influx for us. And once it gets delivered, we typically find within, within minutes of it getting delivered, you're seeing the logo, Cahill Studios, you're seeing the year, you're seeing it posted right online. So it's great publicity and it builds excitement for other people to purchase also. I've never had to do one of these Zoom meetings before where I'm doing the presentation like this, but uh, what do you want and how do you automate it? Well, basically this is it. So we're able to create with the push of a single button, all these products are created.